Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bums Breakdown. As always, we are joined by Dylan. And again, my name is Max. I don't think I've ever said my name on any of these, so we might as well start now. Uh, we're going to be doing the New Mexico preview today. Um, again, we'll go over the kind of last week's game, the game versus Memphis 901, the game versus Luton United. And we'll also touch on the last game versus OC a little bit as kind of the, the three game home stretch um, after our long kind of uh, away kind of. Uh, very big away trip, but Dylan, um, how has the last week gone uh, for the loyal in uh, in easy terms? Well, let me start by saying I'm glad you finally said your name because I was getting to the point where I was a little uncomfortable when I was going to have to ask. But um, yeah, no, it uh, hasn't been a great week. I was look going went into it excited about a three game week, um, and then we lost OC. That was tough. We did beat Luden, but I don't. I mean, and it wasn't even a bad performance. It's just the way it happened. The two late goals was frustrating. Um, And then the game against uh, Memphis was, I think, I've cooled a little bit since then, but I still, that was probably my most irritating performance of the season. Just, it felt like we did the same thing for 90 minutes. And yeah, it was not fun. It's been a bit of a tough week and uh, very much a blown opportunity. We played all of our games in hand and made up very little ground. Yeah, I think it's t- tough to, I mean, right now we'll look at the table, we're sitting in fourth, we aren't too far off the top kind of spots anyway, we're still sitting in that home playoff spot, um, and I know we always speak about kind of good performances, don't always yield good results, taking away the results from the past week, do you think the performances have been up to kind of our normal standard, um, taking away I guess what our normal standard really is, but kind of how would you uh, sum up our performances without the results this last week? Um, I think the the Loudon game was actually probably the best performance. Well, maybe that's not fair. The Orange County game we played all right, um, but no, I, I actually don't think any three of them were really what I would call some of our best performances of the season. I think those came kind of a worryingly while ago, um, and really, I don't think we've seen any of them since the loss of Nick Moon. Probably um, we've had some great results in there, but I don't think that any of the performances would have ranked uh, super highly for me. Yeah, it's tough. And I obviously I know Nick Moon's been out for a while now and I'm I'm not gonna say that the fact that these poor the poor uh, performance has been down to Nick Moon being out obviously he's a big miss for us. Um but again still boldly he's been in that position. We've had obviously other players fit and healthy. I mean obviously no Elijah's been out for a little bit, Guido's kind of had a knock here and there. Um but we pretty much had a, a decent strength team for, for most part of the season, which I know other teams can't really say the same thing. But it's uh, yeah, it's it's not been easy, and I know obviously we are kind of very invested in the team itself. We always want them to win. We, whenever we lose or have a bad performance, it's the end of the world. It almost feels like, and again, we got also got to remind ourselves it's a long season. Um, end of the day, we we aren't the, the the best team in the league, and I think we've got to kind of understand that at times too. I think for the most part, the loyal always seem to be we should be a top contender every single year, but the issue really is is that I think. In reality, we're more so a kind of a fifth, sixth spot team in the conference and then kind of around kind of the first playoff round, second playoff round and no more further than that. But I think, Dylan, for you kind of after this kind of past week, do you think the expectations for the season have changed at all in your opinion? Kind of where do you think right now we should expect to finish? I I mean, yeah, I think they are starting to change and I think they maybe kind of have to. I think at this point we're... We'll, we'll do well to get a home playoff game. Um, and I, I I don't even know about that, honestly. Um, we're not playing that well. Um, results have come our way a bit. But, um, yeah, I think it might be time to start re- reconsidering some things. And I know we both said if we didn't get, like, a certain number of points from these home games, um, and we've already, for me at least, guaranteed, even with a game left to play out of this five-game stretch, or four-game stretch, rather, um, we've already guaranteed we didn't hit the points level I wanted us to hit. Uh, so that's been pretty frustrating. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we keep saying, like, it seems like some good things are there, but there's, what, 11 games left? I mean, <laughs> gotta got to get going at some point. Yeah, I, honestly, I, I, I don't know. I mean, like I said, it's uh, our loyal, uh, are they a title contender, as kind of people say they are, and kind of, uh, and obviously I know, you mentioned off the podcast too um, about the Landon going on about kind of how we're still there. There's kind of six or seven teams who can win the league. 
Um, in all honesty, I think you've really got kind of Sacramento, San Antonio from the West and obviously right now Pittsburgh, Tampa are on there and obviously Louisville are always kind of up and around there. And I think you'd be pushed to say that we're on the same level of the, as those guys right now, even though the table may suggest we're a lot closer than that may seem. As far as watching the teams play, you kind of you look at San Antonio, obviously they are kind of bulldozing teams. Sacramento have been kind of on form all season. Orange County have kind of come from nowhere to kind of come up right behind us and obviously beating us comfortably at our own ground as well. Um, and obviously Oakland too are around there. We never do well against Oakland. So it's tough right now. I mean, honestly, if, if I was to ask you right now, kind of where, how do you think we get on kind of in the postseason? What is your kind of honest opinion right now? Well, I mean, I think that is one benefit of the playoff, American sports playoff model that we have is that it, you don't need to be the best team. You just have to be the hottest team. Um, so, you know, there's always a chance we catch fire kind of at the end of the season and um, go on a run. But if I'm being honest with you, uh, my gut tells me that we're just going to keep continue to be frustrating and probably have a frustrating first round exit on the road. Um, I, I just and I really hate to say that because I try I like to be positive, um, but I really uh I've gotten to, like we talked about last week, I root for a lot of teams that don't do a lot of winning, and I've gotten very used to recognizing these trends, and I just, um, yeah, this definitely doesn't have good good feelings about it for me, um, but I would be happy to be wrong. Yeah, we've I think we've had way too many poor performances and good ones and kind of results not go away when they should have. I mean, you can look back to the indie game where we kind of were a, a, man, or a man up for the most part and didn't end up winning that game. There's games like the Pittsburgh game where we were up for most of that game. Um, and we always had, had some good performances against kind of San Antonio, Sacramento, but I never thought that we were ever going to beat them at any stage in those games either, which is kind of um, the main thing, really. If you, can, you can't beat this kind of top teams, you can't expect to win the league as well. So I don't know. I mean, as far as kind of these last three games, kind of what would you say is kind of the, the main key takeaways or things you've learned um, over the past week about the Loyal? I think for the, the big takeaway for me this past week is that two-thirds of the way into the season, we still don't know what our best team is and like that is not, not good i mean that's that's not how it should be yeah it's i mean i don't know I, and i think we spoke about this beforehand as well as kind of formation again we, we're sticking pretty much to that kind of three at the back five at the back i know we switched to more of a almost a, a five two three versus um Ludum with kind of javi and guido in that middle two there but again it's um I don't know. I, I honestly, the, the, the more I'm seeing this kind of three-five-two, the kind of uh, the more I'm disliking it as far as kind of how it looks in game. We kind of push the ball out wide too often, and again, it, it doesn't work for the most part. And teams have us figured out. So, again, whether we switch to a four-two-three-one at any point for the rest of the season, I don't know. Uh, in my own opinion, I think we play better with that. But again, obviously, uh, I'm not the man in charge, so uh, I can't uh, get that good on the pitch. It's not like football manager. Um, but we'll go into the uh, New Mexico part here, though. Uh, right now, New Mexico are currently 10th in the Western Conference, which, uh, again, I think that's pretty low for them, honestly. Right now, they are 8 wins, 4 draws, and 10 losses on the season. 31 goals for and 33 against. So obviously, goal difference of minus 2 there. And they only have 2 wins in the last 6 games, but that means absolutely nothing because Memphis only had 1 win in the last 8 and uh, they beat us, so I uh, can't really look into that too much. They did actually recently beat Sacramento 3-0 at home. I uh, actually watched that game live, and uh, they did pretty well too far. I know Sacramento were missing a few players here and there, but New Mexico, again, uh, still a decent team regardless of where they are in the league. Uh, we actually drew with them 1-1 in the last matchup. We went 1-0 down pretty early, um, and then they actually went ahead and lost to San Antonio 3-0 in the last game um, before the game we play on this Saturday. But Dylan... Kind of what have you made of New Mexico so far this season? Do you think they kind of deserve to be in 10th right now? Um, or do you think they can kind of make a late push uh, in the rest of the season? Um, I truthfully haven't gotten to watch too much of them. Um, I, I get the sense they've gotten unlucky a few times, though. Um, I think they've given up some late goals, had some harsh decisions. Uh, that's no excuse. That's not the reason they're in 10th. But um, I think maybe there's, you know, a couple more things go your way and the season looks pretty different for them. Um, but, yeah, I... They're a good team. I mean, they have good players. Um, I think that, like you said, it's just because they're not on a good run of form, we should not go into this expecting that we're going to roll them or anything. Yeah, and I also know they had a, uh, a mid-season managerial change too. And I think actually after that change, 
they seem to pick up a little bit more. Um, and we'll move into kind of their last lineup here and their tactics. And um, pretty much looking at it, it's more of a, a 4 2 3 1. I know at times it could almost be a 4 3 3. Um, obviously, got Tambakas in goal here, right back Seymour, Hamilton, and Ryden, two centre backs, Suggs at left back, and then you've got Portillo, Rivas kind of in that. Um, more so a double pivot. I think Portillo is more of a defensive guy than uh, Rivas. And then uh, I think it's Harry Swartz out on the right, Reyes on the left, Moreno and uh, Hernandez. Neither of them, honestly, are an out and out striker. Um, they were both kind of switching um, positions almost. And I know Hernandez kind of dropped a bit deeper at times too. So at times it could almost look like a, a 4 4 2 essentially with those two wingers tucking in as well. Um, and Daniel Bruce did come on at half time um, in place of Hernandez. And I know Bruce has been doing, doing recently for them. But again, he's more of a winger, not an out and out striker. Um, but then obviously, I know we've kind of spoken about New Mexico already. We played them, played them before the season. For you, who are the kind of key stand up players for them? Um, Moreno is, uh, probably the one who always catches my eye the most. Um, he is really great on the ball. Uh, Daniel Bruce always seems to pop up when I watch them, but I, I don't know. I feel like I might've seen he got injured or something. Um, I'd have to double check that, but, uh, those are the two big ones for me. And then Portillo, I feel like, um, is kind of an ever, ever present for them at this point, or at least has been as long as I've been paying attention to the USL. Uh, so those those are the three that really stand out for me. How about how about yourself? Yeah, I, I know. See, I think I think I spoke about Bruce last time. Um, fun fact: I think I said this last time as well. Uh, actually, played with him um, at a trial day to come up to the US to begin with. Uh, I know he had a decent college career, and obviously he's been with New Mexico. I think from the very beginning. Um, but for him, I think obviously he had a tough start to the season. The new manager came in, was playing as more of like a almost a, a false nine as such. Um, I don't know. I guess that's really what I call kind of anyone a, as a winger who's played at striker. They never really are more of the like target man. They always kind of drop a bit deeper, collect the ball, not to run at defences. And um, I think when he came on versus uh, San Antonio in the last game, um, kind of created a few chances for himself there. So again, they're a very kind of fluid team, very kind of quick, and obviously look to kind of. Um, pounce on the counter attack as well a bit so again I don't think we're going to be outdone kind of physically with them I know they are kind of dangerous from set pieces as we saw in the last game versus them but again a very fluid team can sit in the kind of front players move around a lot so that worries me a little bit against our kind of back three and kind of how it's looked recently um, but obviously we'll see and then um, kind of moving into ours I mean again I know you mentioned too about um, the uh, Landon mentioning that we pretty much found our uh, kind of key starting 11, our, like strongest team. Would you agree that we're uh, kind of at that point right now? Um, it definitely seems that Nate has found, I think we have a clear-ish idea of what he feels like is his best 11 now, um, just based on the fact that the team hasn't really changed that much recently. Um but uh, I don't know that I necessarily would agree, but I am also not the U.S. soccer accredited coach, so I probably am not qualified to say on that. But, um, yeah, he, it seems like that the three at the back um, with Bodoli and Perez, as long as Moon's out. Um, and I personally really do like the balance of the midfield of Guido, Martin, or rather uh, Martin, Charlie, and um, Corona, not Guido. Um, though I actually did think Guido had a pretty solid game against Loudon, uh, right? Yeah, that was probably his best performance of the season. Um, but, uh, and then Conway and Toomey, I guess maybe you can make an argument Toomey's form has dipped off a little bit. But uh, Conway just nailed on starter. I mean, he's probably first name on the team sheet after Koke for me. Um, and I think Riley's played himself into like definitely a starting spot. So I think really for me, the only question mark at this point um, is that last center back spot? Is it Simba? Is it Guzman? Um, and until Moon comes back, I think yeah, this is what you've what you've got here is pretty much our, our first choice eleven. Yeah, obviously I know the the back throw. I think Stoneman and Riley. I mean, after the uh, loss of Kyle Adams, those who are pretty much um, bang on as far as who's going to be starting. I know Simba obviously started the Luden game, started the game versus Memphis too. I thought we did very well. I'll be honest, I was surprised when um, Michael Chilaka came in and. I think he uh, came off the bench in a game, his first one available for us when Simba didn't come on, come off the bench. So I was surprised that he came on over Simba and then he started the uh, Luden game as well. Um, I'll be honest, I mean, I think we both agreed on that one. He had a very poor kind of first half in that one because he even got a yellow card early on, uh, misplaced a few passes. So again, I think Jack is more of a, um, 
Again, he's not a, uh, a guy that's going to come in, start straight away. I think he's more of a developmental player. Um, obviously, gets chances when he kind of can have them. Um, and I, I, I don't know whether he's kind of a, a true centre back or more so kind of a, a right back centre back. Which I, I feel as though all of our centre backs right now, Bar Stoneman, really are right now. I mean, I think Guzman's primarily like a right back. Riley's been a right back for a long time, and again, Simba, I think could could argue maybe a, a full on centre back there, but. Yeah, it's uh, I, I don't know there. And again, the midfield, I think Guido can come in and kind of in either over Charlie or Corona. Um, but I, I don't know. I think we're missing somewhat of a pacey kind of down the middle. And also, you know, we've got Toomey and Conway there. Mushkalusha's come and come in for Toomey as well. Um, but we literally rely so heavily on our fullbacks. It hurts at times, honestly. And um I don't know. And kind of looking at that, I mean, obviously we know Darmus has played recently, Mushkalusa, um, Collier. Would you kind of prefer more of a front three? Or are you kind of happy with that front two? Or would you kind of take Toomey out of it right now? I think for me, if you were just giving me like the opportunity to set the lineup, I would probably switch to a 4-2-3-1, like you said. Um, one of our biggest problems with this team, like you just said, we rely so heavily on the fullbacks or wingbacks. And, I mean, just look at this lineup. Like you said, there's no pace here in the midfield at all, like in the center. Don't get me wrong. I love Charlie. I love Colin. I love Corona. They all bring excellent attributes, but none of them are that quick. None of them are that willing of runners getting forward. Corona's good for a late run into the box sometimes, but that's not a super consistent thing. Toomey and Conway both look to play in kind of the half spaces or at point up top. There's literally nobody to be running in the channels in this team, assuming that the the wingbacks are meant to be in the wide areas. Um, and, you know, that can be remedied by having them move out to in, which we see a lot with Perez. But it it kind of is unsurprising to me with this team that we struggle to create any, anything central of the wings because we just don't have the runners there. So, yeah, I would love to do see a 4-2-3-1. Um, I don't know who we would necessarily drop of the midfield um, or who would play where, but I just I think we need to give ourselves – a better chance of like having players in spaces that aren't just wide crosses. Yeah, we. I mean, we've we've come so one dimensional now, honestly, that we know every single time more than likely going down the left hand side, Bodley's gonna cut down there. Nothing against Bodley too, but I think Memphis figured him out. Essentially, he's only got a left foot, and uh, if he wants to cut in, very likely he's not going to be able to be successful doing that. Perez again is more than likely always going to cut inside on that left foot. Again, I know he did win a penalty early on versus Memphis, um, which uh, of course we went ahead and missed. Um, but aside from that, I mean, like I said, we've got pretty much the whole team is down the central area of the pitch. We just don't ever work through it. Teams force us out wide; they know what to do. Um, but again, even then, when Perez and Bodley are kind of pinned back there, there isn't kind of any option to kind of big switch to kind of get Conway and Toomey in behind there because they're so central. Um, so whether we go to a, a front three of some kind, like we did against Luden, we kind of, um, I, I know Collier was kind of one of the wingers, which surprised me a little bit there. Um, whether it kind of, a, instead of a, a four two three, one more of a 4-3-3, three, three, um, allows us to kind of utilize Mushka Luther a bit more, and then maybe even kind of Conway on the wing and Damas up top to kind of allow Conway and Damas to play together. But yeah, it's, um, I don't know, there's a, I, I think we're far away of finding the kind of best tactic and stuff that work for us. And, I'll be honest, I have, haven't seen a performance in the kind of 3-5-2 that I've gone, wow, we are going to go far in the season and we are kind of the, the real deal. Um, I've only honestly real seen that within a, a 4-2-3-1, um, which uh, I think we've seen like three times, which um, pains me to say the least. Uh, but I'm going to move into kind of the, the key matchups, um, kind of storylines here. Obviously, I know um, last game out was New Mexico 1-1. Um, I will say, as much as Oakland are a bogey team for us, I always feel like New Mexico are as well. They always put up a good fight. Um, so, for a guys, I think it's going to be a tough game no matter what. Um, but obviously, looking over it here, the things I do have, um, obviously right now, New Mexico, only two wins in the last six and three away wins all season. So, that should give us some hope. But, like I've already mentioned too, um, San Diego Lowe don't like to take form into account regardless of the other team. So uh, it doesn't really matter too much there. Uh, Can Lowe bounce back after a tough week? Obviously one win uh, out of the last three home games. How many changes do we see to the lineup? I think we've already touched on as far as Nate and Landon kind of both kind of hinting towards we pretty much got the kind of 
the strongest 11 or close to it right now, so I doubt it too much. And then any change of formation tactics and uh, do we come out the gates quickly or let New Mexico settle in to the game? And Dylan, for you, anything to kind of add on there? Uh, let me bring up both kind of uh, lineups here. Anything else to add on there or kind of um, any additions? Um, no, I, th I think you pretty much covered it. it. It hasn't been a super inspiring week of San Diego Martin soccer, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like I said, it's it's been a tough time, and like I said, we we always been want to be optimistic. I think, like I said, every season the loyal are expected to at least be title contenders. Um, but uh, it, the tough thing is, I think, really, is lowering your expectations to kind of what the team can really do and where we realistically are right now. I think, like I said, we're kind of a fourth, fifth place team in the Western Conference. I don't think we're going to see out the season strong. Right now, I'd, I'd love to be proven wrong. I'd love to go on a, a mad run and kind of um, see out the season in a top four spot, top three spot, which I think honestly is doable. We definitely can get to that point, but the team right now, I don't think, um, is playing in a way which uh, allows me to kind of uh, foresee that happening in the future. Um, but uh, like I said, the key matchups there, like I said, I think really. Colin's going to have a, it's a tough battle there to kind of keep either Moreno or Hernandez, whether Bruce comes in there, kind of uh, dropping in a bit deeper, whether one of the center backs kind of gets pulled out a little bit. Um, I don't know. And obviously, with Perez and Bodley having to get so up the pitch, again, any team who leaves one of their wingers to stay high, whether it be Reyes or Swartz, is always going to cause us problems there as well, purely because we haven't got anyone kind of marking that space. And if we need to, obviously, Riley pushes out there. Simba will have to obviously cover over. And always that big switch from one flank to the other coming over is always seems to be one that catches us out because Perez isn't always going to be able to get back in time. And then same, obviously, for the other side there, if it obviously goes the other way, um, because we rely so heavily on them, they have to be in the attack for us in order to even create chances um, on the other end of the pitch. But as always, the last part of the show, predictions. Dylan, I hope you thought long and hard about this one. I'll be honest, I think... Every single time I've been optimistic about predictions and it seems to go against me. So, uh, I mean, for this week, I was leading towards either a draw or a loss here, but uh, I want to hear your thoughts first. Well, uh, in the four games that San Diego Loyal and New Mexico United have played, nobody has ever won. So I am going to guess that uh, that trend will continue and I'll go with a two to two draw. Um, and I'm a little bit hoping it's a bit of a reverse jinx, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so 2-2, two, two, I'll go Conway and Charlie for us and New Mexico. No, two own goals for Loyal. <laughs> no, New Mexico will have uh, Daniel Bruce off the bench and Rebus. Okay, and uh, special mention for Dylan as well. The uh, first person that one of us to get a correct prediction, second after John Morrissey, who's uh, only ever been on the show once and um, it's already uh, top of the table. Um, I'm I'm torn with this one here. I mean, looking off the past results, New Mexico haven't scored a lot recently. Um, so I, I think it's going to be, it isn't going to be a high scoring affair. I mean, if I go through here, let me have a quickly pull up the last game. They lost 3 0 San Antonio. They lost two under Hartford. I forgot about that one as well. Jesus. One of to or OC. Um, I'm going to go. We'll go with a 1 0 win for San Diego Loyal. We'll go, yeah, 1 0 nice. win. And uh, we'll go with a. We'll go with Charlie Adams' goal. Charlie's not scored in a while. Love it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to take a clean sheet. I'll be happy with the 1 0 result. Again, honestly, nowadays. I honestly, I don't care about the performance for the most part. If we get a result, that's really all that matters. But I honestly think with that too, we, we never seem to grind out games and kind of snatch a result that we don't deserve. We purely only win when we really, really are the deserving team to win. So um, whether we need to play a bit more scrappy, who knows? But obviously I don't like us sitting in either to kind of uh, sit on our counter. But Dylan, any last things to uh, add before we wrap things up? Yeah, no, you just kind of hit the nail on the head there. Like, early in the season, great performances where you don't get the result are, are kind of fun because it's like, ooh, you know, let's, we're almost there. But we got 11 games to go. We're slowly trickling down the table. We need results. Um, I would love it to be beautiful, flowing football, but I'll I'll take a grimy 1-0 as well. So, at this point, it's the results that matter. Yeah, and it's uh, it seems like a long way since the beginning of the season where we kind of have all the optimism and hope and... Um... 
I think kind of that mid-season stretch of the away games didn't help. But I mean, even now we're back home, it doesn't seem like that's changed at all. So we'll see. Obviously, there's been a few changes here and now for the loyal. Hopefully those guys can kind of um, get kind of in, adjusted into the team quickly. Um, and I will, I will say I've been impressed by Mushkalusa when he has been playing on Nottino. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of his ability on the board to kind of drive at defenders is something that we haven't really had a lot of. Um, but uh, obviously, there's always hope and optimism. And again, as Dylan mentioned earlier too, playoffs are really what matters. But again, we need to kind of get on a hot streak of form to even consider that we're going to um, go on a uh, deep playoff run. But that'll wrap things up there. Um, again, we will be back very soon, obviously next week after... The New Mexico game, the next one after this one is going to be Rio Grande Valley away and then Birmingham Ooh. Legion away as well. So then we do have a big stretch away from home. So we've got Rio Grande Valley away, Birmingham Legion, Charleston Battery, Louisville. I think Birmingham might be at home. Birmingham is at home, so. correct. I uh, saw that the wrong way around. Maybe it's not a long away stretch. Um, then after that, another three away games, Charleston, Louisville, and Monterey Bay. So um, the games aren't getting any easier. Uh, maybe after that with Las Vegas, but um, yeah, it's uh, we, we always say USL is a tough league. There is never any easy games, and I think kind of this season's shown that. Um, but again, we expect more, we expect better, um, and uh, I think in order for Lord to kind of grow and grow and succeed, there needs to be uh, results and performances to match. Um, but we'll see. But again, thanks for listening or watching, and we'll see you guys very soon.